What's up, everybody? It's Brandon from Box Office Banner and Coat Flick Symposium. We're here to talk some more Indiana Jones and the Temple of Fucking Doom, people. And the fuck's already coming, I just realized. Uh, yeah, I had my daughter on the last one. Uh, of course, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, uh, yeah, I tried to refrain from fucks, but if I'm being honest, I do cuss in front of her. But at the same time, I try not to. I don't know what's wrong with me. I am a polite person in real life. I'm not somebody who's dumb. I try to be really intricate with my thoughts and the way I say things, but I've always been plagued with these curse words. I don't know if it's like I'm putting a little spice on top of it, but nevertheless, the fucks are back in full force. I'm sorry I'm this way. You know, if you're like Christian or don't like cuss words for some weird reason, but the real reason we're here, Temple of Doom. Like, share, subscribe, by the way. Comment, comment, that's the main thing. Temple of Doom. This one is a very popular sequel, but it can never quite reach the heights of the first, which seems to be the undeniable favorite. Do I feel that way, though? I don't know if I'm going to give that away right now, because I'm going to do a ranking. Now, I know I gave the score of the first one, which I kind of regret doing that now, and, you know, hindsight being 2020, but admittedly, I did have my daughter on the podcast, and I explained her podcast videos, like a podcast, you know, channel type of thing. On this uh, particular review, I did have my daughter on Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I had said I do for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because I'm trying to keep up with her and make sure, you know, even though she's adorable, but I'm making sure she's not, like, doing too much crazy shit, but it's like, you know, I'm watching her and trying to think because I'm so off the cuff on these podcasts. That, uh, you know, I wanted her to be chill, and through the muck of all that, I was like, damn, I revealed my rating. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, just forget that. But going forward, I won't reveal any more ratings, or at least that's the plan. Watch me fuck that up again. <laughs> because I want to do a ranking at the end of this. I want this to be authentic. So you know my rating if you go back and watch the first one for the first, the first video for the first one, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But you will not know that going forward. So we can kind of, you know... Just go through the motions and have some emphasis and structure in terms of just like, oh shit, what's it going to be? Suspense on the actual ranking. So Temple of the Doom. Let me say, I've, this was, mm, I'm already about to forget. <laughs> I thought I was about to spoil something right there. Uh, I love this movie. I'm just going to come out and say it. I'll say that much. You know I love the first one. Obviously, you've seen my rating. This has, but there's nothing to really spoil in that regard. Everybody, I think, for the most part, likes at least or loves this movie. This is a very good sequel, as I was saying. Everybody knows that, but it's not quite the first. Will that change with me? There's definitely things that are done way better in the first one. I'll say that much. Um, for instance, I think the first one has better pacing from front to back. Like, it's just a more exciting, well done, right when you feel like there might be a lull, it picks you right back up again, and you're just engaged to the maximum. This one, to me, has dry spots. It really does, which definitely hurts it. I'll say the love interest in this movie, Willie, I think her name is. Again, terrible names, people annoys the living shit out of me in this movie. The girl in the first one, she was terrific, you know? Like, I mean, as terrific as she could be, you know, it's never... Yeah, I don't think you ever walk away from an action movie where you're like, oh my God. Like, let's just put it to another movie real quick. That James Bond movie was good, and, you know, we love the James Bond girls, right? That's like a thing and a theme amongst the franchise. But you're never like, I'll tell you, you stole the show, though. Uh, this James Bond girl was easily overshadowing Bond. She was amazing. Now, I don't want to put that past you. Like, maybe that's happened. There's been some good James Bond girls, but you know what I mean. Like, maybe that wasn't the best example. There has been so many, like, oh, yeah, that was a good side character as the female interest, but it never overtakes the lead megastar. Your Indiana Joneses, your James Bond. Bonds, <laughs> however you want to say that, you're James Bonds. It just doesn't happen. So obviously she wasn't the steal the show person, but as far as like, you know, little, my little piece on the side, if I'm Indiana Jones, 
She was entertaining. She was fun. She was loud and eccentric. And every time I thought she was going to get on my nerves, that was right when she dialed it back and became wholesome and cool again. The girl in this movie was just, oh my God, about everything around every corner. And sometimes if you're hot, that can come off as like, you know, cute in this kind of way where you're almost like, you know, <laughs> to make yourself look not manly at all. But you're like, I just wish I could, you know, hug her and cuddle her and make sure she's okay. There's an element of that. But the way this actress portrayed it, I don't know, maybe it's just a sign of the times. I just was fully put off from the beginning. Like, every moment, I was like, oh, my God. Like, all the bad things that happened to her. Like, when the elephant, she's like, you need a bath. She's, like, spraying fucking whatever on her perfume, on whatever the hell she's doing the elephant, and just sprays her and puts her in the fucking water. And there's no just like, oh, shit. Like, she, she got what she got. It's more like, good, good God, I'm done listening to her. When she's got to, like, save, you know, short round and... Indiana Jones' life is like the spikes are coming down. This is a good example. Obviously, two completely different things here in the regard of short rounds. Obviously, a little boy. And little boys, you know, have that, I guess, or little girls, little boys, they can have that cute element of like, oh, it's a cute kid. You know, like, oh, look what they did. Oh, my God. Whereas a girl, completely different, unless you're a fucking creep pedophile, a girl, it's completely different because it's just like, oh my God, she's adorable though. She's beautiful. And you're thinking about it in a different way and you're coming around her in that way. So short round nails his category, which is just like, look at the cute little kid messing up. Uh, older woman does not nail down just like, man, you know, she's messing up, but like, she's still beautiful. And you, God, like I would still like, I mean, of course, like she is a beautiful girl, but you're also looking at her just like, I would never do anything with this chick because she's annoying the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> there's a fucking difference, dude, obviously, than that. You know, because there's moments where you see a hot chick that messes up and you're just like, yeah, dude, but you know what? I feel bad for all this, you know, jive. When you see her, at least for me, it's not like I feel bad for her. It's just like, you're just fucking annoying and dumb and I'm tired of you. She gets a little better in the second act, but I think that's because the second act is that good. Or third act. Second act, third act kind of combine and make for one long extended ending. And let me tell you, amazing. The first half of this movie is very, you know, it's good. Not great. But I think it's like, that borderline good where the first one left such an amazing template and was done so well that you're just sitting there just like, will any of this measure up to the first? I mean, from characters or whatever, because outside of short round, who the fuck, like Indiana Jones, I'll say this much. I think Indiana Jones is even more, like I said, he was in his, he was in his element in the first one. This one, even more so. He's more comfortable. But you're looking around and, you know, Alfred Molina, I couldn't remember his character in the first one's name. Still fucking can't. But this time I'll say the actor, you know, easier for me to pick up on a way to describe this in different ways when I don't have a kid in my lap. <laughs> uh, he was amazing. You know, the damn uh, girl, you know, the, the side piece in the first one. Amazing. The villains, you know, they had this like element to them. Speaking of elements again. <laughs> That was, you know, cool. They weren't amazing, but they were fun. Every character you came into contact with was fun. And this movie, until you get to, like, the actual fucking murderous psychos in the Temple of Doom, it was just, like, 45 minutes of just, like, okay, it's cool to see uh, the Shidoshi from Bloodsport in the very beginning of the movie. That's cool, by the way. Uh, that's something. But as far as characters in the movie in the first 45 minutes, you're like, okay, Harrison Ford, still killing it, maybe even more. Short round's cool. And none of the other characters mattered outside of this chick who was just annoying the shit out of me. So it was like characters, story, everything was a little bit more bland. But when we hit that motherfucking second half of the second act and then on to the third act, which is, like I said, one prolonged third act... This gets into, like, action-adventure masterpiece territory, man. They just, like, you keep thinking, like, okay, maybe this will end, and then we'll move on to a new scene, and it just keeps going, and keeps going, and keeps going, and keeps going. 
and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going to the point where you're at the end of it, you're like, oh man, this is just it. This is the end. Like it just keeps going and not anywhere, shape, or form in a bad way. A lot of times when a movie keeps just like boom, 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 boom on the same thing, it's kind of like, oh man, like I thought, are we ever gonna get out of this? Oh no, this is this is like just one long ending. That's it. Okay. You have that type of reaction here. It was like, give me more, feed it to me more. Like, cause it was so fun. Every action set piece, everything that was just transpiring before your very eyes was just magical. They just nailed, absolutely nailed the second half of this movie. Fucking phenomenal. A one. And I misspoke on the first review where I said that I couldn't remember. I even did say that much again, kid in my arms trying to concentrate and speak around shit and remember shit. Uh, I said that temple of doom might've been the first movie that was rated PG 13 that push, you know, the boundaries that got pushed so much that it was PG 13. I think it's actually the other way around. They had watched temple of doom at a PG rating. Cause this does get pretty damn dark in the second half. The first one has its dark moments. This one, you know, you got motherfuckers falling off a bridge and the alligators killing people, dudes ripping out hearts, a lot of the stuff that's alluded to. Whereas the first one, I could see them watching Raiders of the Lost Ark, and like, oh man, it's kind of pushing it. This one's like, still haven't quite pushed it to R-rated, but you're sitting there like, God, they're pushing even more, and this is a successful franchise. What are they going to do in three? This is when their feet were to the fire. Speaking of fire, let me just go ahead and say this. Once we get in that second half, the thing that after they rip the hearts out of these people or just at least that first person, we're just like, holy shit. Cause he rips the heart out and the heart's still beating and the chest cavity closes and he lowers him down into this tornado of fire. Or I just call it the volcanic tornado. That's what I've called it since I was a kid. This is one of the, like the first things I remember scaring the shit out of me for some reason. I just remember being a kid and watch them rip this guy's heart out. Again, I'm watching this. I'm like, this is PG as a kid. This is impacts. This is what shows you the difference between PG movies, you know, then and now, I guess you could say. But when they're lowering him down this cart, he just engulfs in flames and he's screaming bloody murder. And you're looking at this thing as he's getting lowered down into it. And it's, that's pretty much what it is. It's like a volcanic tornado. Intense as fuck. And this is mind you again after you just ripped the dude's heart out and sealed it shut and then you're watching it that's another intense scene after fucking indy cuts the bridge and everybody's falling into this alligator pit basically of water where they're just getting ripped apart just waiting to fall if you fall you're fucked <laughs> these alligators are on it there's a moment where like indy protect your heart and the dude just grabs it and i remember being a kid just being like oh my fucking guy he's gonna rip indiana jones's heart out Ugh. yeah and Short Round, already kind of talked about him. How fucking good is Short Round in this movie? Even the little kung, he's kicking people. It's almost like kung fu moves. He even fights that one kid who comes around at the end before they almost go on like a roller coaster. Like, dude, dude. Every bit of everything that happens from the point where, what's her name, Willie? I keep forgetting. First off, fucked up name, chick. Only Willies I know are dudes, bro. I'm going to check under the hood. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, she, I'm sorry. I just don't like her. Every, from the moment she's just like, five minutes, Indiana Jones, you'll be back in here. And Indiana Jones goes back in her room. And, you know, it's a funny, you know, fun little scene where they're both looking at the clock just like, I know he's going to give in. And they're playing that whole fucking game. And that dude comes basically out of a painting and tries to attack him. And Short Round helps. And he's like, you whip. And then, like, he puts him up in the feet. I got a ceiling fan right here. Wraps him up. He's like choked. And then Indiana Jones goes into Willie's room and she's just like, I'm right here. Like just fucking uh, annoying the shit out of me again. <laughs> and he's just, no mind to you, bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> and he's just searching for something and I don't know where he finds it. And he pushes through it from that moment on where he finds that secret room. Absolute perfection. From the ceiling caving in to him finding the fucking sacrifice getting caught, having to evade it. This whole section, which is like half the movie, elevates this movie in spades. And that's the main thing I can say about this. Whew! It's heat, man. Like, one of the best stretches of movies 
that like I've seen in terms of just pure fun entertainment and what I look for in a movie. So yeah, how will that translate to the actual movie though? Because like I said before, then wasn't bad, but just nowhere near Raiders. So uh, let's let's see how that uh, transpires. Can't say my score. I love you guys, and you know we'll see come that ranking. Uh, it's gonna get interesting. What are your thoughts? Do you like this one better than Raiders of the Lost Ark? Do you have that controversial opinion that actually might not be that controversial? Let me know. Again, like, share, subscribe. Let me know what the fuck's going on. I will be back with the third Indiana Jones movie. Who's ready to crusade? Uh, me. Damn. Tala Destiny. We're almost there. Love you guys. Peace.